Welcome back to the shop, guys. Today we've got a couple interesting problems to fix. Uh, actually, I don't know if they're gonna be interesting or not. I don't know what the problems are. I have not one, but two pieces of test equipment that are broken, and I'm gonna try and save myself a little bit of money by fixing them myself. I know there's professionals that do this for a living, and they'd be able to look at it, identify the problem, and do this really quickly. I'm sure that's what 99% of you would do if you had a piece of broken test equipment, and I would recommend that if you can afford it, but, uh, I'm an idiot. So we're going to take the risk. Uh, let's pop the bonnet. I've got, this is an Eaton secondary uh, injection test set for doing Cutler Hammer and Eaton trip units. And I've got the Phoenix PAD 1025, which is a dual voltage uh, AC DC high pot. Hopefully we can save a bunch of money by not sending crap back to Phoenix and just do it in house. That's the goal. And that's what we're going to get into today. Hope you learned something. So this is the, actually this is the old Westinghouse version for testing old trip units. Um, you would use this big crazy cable here, plug straight into the trip unit, and we can secondary inject the trip unit that way so we don't have to do primary injection. Um, if you're watching this video, I kind of assume you have some idea of what we're doing here. They've been making this test set, actually Westinghouse originally made this test set to go with their old trip units, color hammer, use they're effectively an identical trip unit. It's it's the same one um, with, a, with a different brand name. I might have a different part number for the, their trip units, their breakers, when they were selling the Magnum as Color Hammer. A couple years later, Eaton buys Color Hammer, comes out with new new trip units. The same test set can work with the new trip units using this funky adapter thing. It needs a external power supply it's it's really goofy uh, it's a little bit cumbersome to use especially in the field in front of a piece of switch gear stuff like that it, it's it's not it's it's cumbersome it's a little clumsy but it still works and i bought this used for a pretty good price i mean test equipment in general it, the markup on it's outrageous so everything is expensive when it comes to test equipment which is part of the reason why i want to fix this i don't have one of the old color hammer uh trip units but I can demonstrate what it should do. Whatever comes out of the test set through this lead, uh, this is just an adapter box. It shouldn't be anything in here other than just connections. Uh, whatever comes out of here goes through the trip unit and then we'll need to multiply the amps that we're actually pushing in by the, the CT ratio. And I'll give you a quick example of what it should look like. C phase is working on this. So we'll get this running, we'll hit reset, start the test and we start cranking the current up. Just for example, so I'm pushing five amps out of my amp detector, out of my test set. And let's say I went to a long time pickup on here. Can I go back to my meter? Yeah, so pushing five amps out of the test set, I'm reading 2,000-ish amps on my trip unit. So I know that C phase is working correctly. Here's my problem. When I go to any other phase, instead of just showing 2,000 amps on on B phase, yeah, I got, I got problems. Something goofs up in the trip unit every time we do this. Now I've tried it on a couple different trip units, tried it on a couple different breakers. Something's wrong. Do this further. We'll look at the meter on the trip unit, and we'll run a little bit of current into B phase. for whatever reason, when I try to push current on B phase, it comes up on A and B at the same time. It could be in the adapter going to my Digitrip, my, my uh, DS to Digitrip adapter. Uh, it could be in the wiring from the test set to the adapter. It could be in this cable. Don't know how that would happen. Um, or it could be in the test set itself. So that's kind of what we want to take a look at today. So let's go ahead and get this uh, turned off. Unplug this guy. Probably didn't need to do that. Let's see here. Ooh, we can see already. Let me get the macro lines up. Looks like one of these plugs has been damaged or repaired in the field. So um, that might be indicating an issue. It looks like it's going to connect all right. It looks like it's going to. It looks like we're making contact between the plug and the little test port on the trip unit. 
So I'm not super concerned with that. This is a little bit slack. I wonder if one of the guys accidentally yanked one or two of the wires out and just put the wires back in the wrong spot. I guess that's my first troubleshooting step. I mean, we could take those out and just see if, see if swapping the wires around uh, fixes it. I'm not sure if I really want to do that. I guess what I would like to do is determine what the pinout of this is and <laughs> see if it's working right. Okay, my apologies for the weird camera angles. Filming while doing this is going to be interesting. We've got things marked A, B, C, neutral ground. Um, I looked in the manual and the, the, the manual's good, don't get me wrong. It doesn't actually give you a real pinout, and I don't, I'm not really sure what these letters mean. So we're going to work backwards to see if we can figure it out. Um, I should expect current. I don't know where the return on the current is. Is that a ground or neutral? Maybe it's not. I don't know. We'll start on, on neutral here um, and just sort of see if we are even in the right ballpark here. Uh, let's go to B. We'll switch to B here, fire that up, bring the current up a little bit. Looks good, it's about an amp, cool. I'm not sure how much of that you guys can actually see. Go to C, bring that up. Cool, Gucci. All right, go to ground. And to do this, I need to pull this little ground test lever back. If you've ever done this in the field, I'm sure you're familiar. Bring that up. Ooh, that doesn't work. Por qué? I'm not 100% sure how that works. That's embarrassing. So I'm wondering if it's like this. So if I say we're coming out ground and we come back in ground. Hey, hey, that's it. Okay, I'm not as dumb as I look. So the ground is just a different return terminal. Interesting. Well, I know that works. So what have we proved? We proved that it's not an issue with the test set. We proved it's not an issue with the wiring up to here, so long as this is correct. It looks correct to me, so I'm gonna assume that it's correct. Let's move on to the next thing. I wanna check the pinout on my adapter. I'm sure this is gonna be hard to follow, but I've got a lead coming out of the fluke. We're on continuity mode. We're gonna use this other lead. My black lead is gonna be my return side, and this is gonna be how we check continuity through our wonky little adapter thing. And of course, I'm making the assumption that this is entirely passive. I could be very wrong. Absolutely wrong. Proof. Interesting. I didn't see continuity on any of those. I have continuity in none of those. What the heck? Let's go B phase. Like you can't be doing that much in this little box. I might have to open this up and see what's going on. What the heck? C. We still on, still on beeper mode. I would expect it's just straight to one of these pins, but uh, I've been wrong before and it looks like I'm wrong again. What does this do? I'm lost. All right. Told you I was an idiot. Let's see. Let's pop it open. See what happens. See what's on the inside. I truly have no idea what I'm going to find in here. I was expecting that this was just like a, a wire loom adapter so that we could go from the old school style to the the new Digitrip 1150s, but it looks like this has some brains in it. Oh my gosh, this has brains in it. I'm not sure, <laughs> I'm not sure what I thought I was gonna find. Oh, but look at that, look at that. We smoked a cap in here. Oh my goodness, oh this stinks. It stinks so bad. I'm glad it's the adapter and not the actual test set because this is gonna be, a, this is a smaller thing and it's cheaper to replace, and B, it actually looks like it might just be this one capacitor, so hopefully, Absolute wrong thing to fix. Is that a capacitor or is that something else? I'm no big Clive, but uh, 
99% sure that's a MOV, and I'm, again, 99% sure that's to protect the transformer. So inside, I'll throw a screenshot up on, on screen for you guys. Inside the breaker, we get the current source, which is the CTs, uh, and that goes through a transformer, like a step-down transformer that turns that current into a proportional amount of voltage that the trip unit can read. So we're doing the same thing here because we've got an old test set and a new trip unit. Um, and the old, the old ones, I guess they just got five amps straight to them. Uh, the new trip units, these 1150s, they just get, it must just be a voltage input. So um, we inject five amps out of this, and I get a couple volts uh, from the from these, which is why I didn't have continuity from the post on the front of the adapter. I didn't have continuity from here to um, the wires that plug into the trip unit. I'm leaning on that not being my only problem. This blown MOV, this would only blow if I've got an issue, presumably. I, I'm not really sure. I'm gonna have to think about that a little bit more. We're gonna have to dig into it. Number one, let's take these MOVs all the way out. Let's just take all of them out. I know I'm gonna have to replace one of them. I'm sure these parts are cheap enough. I'm just gonna buy a bunch of them. Um, like I think I alluded to earlier, the purpose of this, because we've got uh, like a fixed current source, like a CT, you don't want to open circuit that CT. That would be really bad for the CT, potentially the wiring, potentially some other stuff connected to it. Because if you uh, think of it like the inverse of a, of a regular transformer, a transformer uh, wants to drive a proportional voltage all the time. So if you short the two together, it's gonna try to drive that voltage constantly, um, only to have the current go really, really high until stuff overheats and burns up. Uh, a current transformer wants to drive a proportional current, proportional from the primary to the secondary. It wants to drive current in the secondary. And if you have an open circuit on the secondary, the voltage will just spike. Um, and there's not necessarily a limit to how high it can spike. I mean, you get physically, yes, there is. You get insulation resistance, it eventually breaks down, blah, 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 blah. Um, you'll eventually saturate the CT, stuff like that. But for the sake of argument, I mean, you, you, you don't open circuit a CT. That would be really bad. So what these MOVs will do is if the voltage gets too high on the CT circuit, they essentially go from being a really high resistance to being a really low resistance, and they'll conduct better and bleed off all the excess energy of the CT circuit. So what I'm thinking happened was maybe this was pushing current Maybe I was pushing current through my test set and the secondary got unplugged, burned up one of these MOVs. I, I'm not really sure. Um, let me know in the comments what you guys think. Anyway, we're going to proceed by checking continuity, see where all this fun stuff goes. So I get a phase current going into donde. I'm gonna presume that this giant wire nut with all these jammed in here is like the, the neutral. And that would make the most sense. Okay, so A, the one labeled A, it's also the top terminal here. This is A on this side. Uh, I keep dropping stuff in here. I'm gonna have to take this all the way apart to get these nuts out. A comes to presumably the top transformer unit thing. Absolute wrong. Proof. Goes to the bottom, of course. Top terminal, bottom transformer. That makes the most sense. Okay, so the A terminal coming in goes to here. B terminal coming in goes to here. C terminal and go uh, coming in goes to here. And then the ground is this one. And of course that one is gonna go, interesting, straight to this wire nut. Where did neutral go? Neutral goes to this one. Huh, I wonder if I was doing that wrong. I was testing that earlier. There's a good chance I was doing that wrong. I'm not gonna worry about that right now. I've sort of eyeballed out where these wires physically connect to. Um, so my A phase post coming from the front of this thing, my A phase post with A, B, C, neutral ground. And then the secondary wires, uh, so the other, the other winding of the transformer. So I've got, you know, one winding comes off here, um, gets tied up. 
and the secondary side comes down to these. So we're putting the current from the test set into the primary and I'm getting a uh, presumably a voltage, maybe a fixed current out. I'm not really sure how this transformer is wound. I'm not an engineer. I'm an idiot who's been in the field since I was like 19. So uh, we're gonna check the resistance, presumably here to here. So we got 4.5 ohms, 4.2, that's good. 4.2 and then my new, or my ground transformer. So my primary of all of these the primary winding has the same resistance. There's a couple other tests that I could do, but uh, realistically, I'm, I'm gonna assume that the transformers are good if the winding resistance is consistent between all of them. Um, so on the primary, obviously it's about the same. So let's go to the secondary now. Uh, 31 point something. B phase is the two, these two wires, 31.2, cool. C phase. 31 point something and my ground or my neutral is another 30 point something it's it's there so i assume my primary and my secondary windings are the same for all four of these little transformer units so it could just be a matter of these movs being bad here let's well i'm sort of tempted to try to run this without the movs uh, I feel like that might be a mistake. Or, or here, let's do something maybe a little bit dumber. Let's do this, but we won't use the ground test. Yeah? Yeah, let's put the good MOVs back on A, B, and C, but we won't use ground. Uh, and that'll... <sighs> hey, that's troubleshooting, right? Isolate the problem, fix one variable, or change one variable, and see if it fixes the problem. That's, that's troubleshooting in a nutshell. All right, so we're putting the MOVs back on A, B, and C phase, but we're not gonna do ground, and we'll just say that we can't use ground until I get the new MOV back in. For anybody that doesn't know, an MOV, MOV stands for metal oxide varistor. Uh, varistor meaning variable resistor. It changes in resistance with the amount of voltage applied to it. So you apply a small voltage, it has a Typically, a high resistance. Uh, you apply a high voltage or higher than its uh, electric breakdown voltage. Actually, is that what it's called? Whatever that variable is. Uh, when you apply too much voltage to it, it uh, goes from being a high resistance to a low resistance. And it's useful in a couple situations. Uh, lightning arresters are the big one that comes to mind. MOVs. Uh, transmission lines, you just call them lightning arresters or LAs, and they work in a very similar way. So when they're at their, their nominal line voltage, so we've got a you know 15 kV transmission line or whatever, and you're sitting at, what is that phase to phase? 7,000 something. Um, your MOV is gonna be rated for the phase to ground voltage of the transmission line. And if we exceed that by a really high margin, like say in the event of a lightning strike on the transmission line, the MOV goes from being a really, really high resistance, probably in the kilo ohm, mega ohm range, to a very low resistance in the tens of ohms range. And what they'll do is they'll bleed all that excess voltage, all that excess energy, off of the transmission line to ground, the voltage will then drop once the lightning strike has bought off all its energy to ground. And then it will go back to being a resistor. And now there's definitely cooler things that lightning arresters do now. Some of them have counters, some of them have all sorts of crazy electronics in them that do whatever. They work better, they fire transistors and stuff like that. But uh, yeah, the, the main function, oh, geez, that's it. the main function is to bleed off all the energy of the lightning strike to ground. Is there a washer in here? No, there's not. Oh, I wish I had a clamp handy. Holy moly, me oh my. I still have the same freaking problem. 
God dang it. Okay, so I had more, more than one issue. What does that tell me? Uh, it tells me I'm dumb. We're gonna check the pin out and see if the pin out makes sense um, from my adapter out. All right, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we have found the problem, the second of two. Batting a thousand on this one. I bring my A-phase current to neutral and then get my A-phase voltage by itself. I, th I, th I think, I'm not sure how else to describe this. Test set stuff is weird. Um, it looks like at some point this got repaired and I'm assuming it got repaired in the field good enough to pass one or two trip units. Um, and they just never bothered to fix anything. What looks like wound up happening is uh, on the plug right here, these two wires got swapped. So it's pin 11 and 12, and one of them looks like it got repaired hastily with some, uh, <laughs> some needle nose. So we're gonna gut that, uh, take those two pins out and swap them back into the right place. Hope, hope that fixes it. Uh, like I said, I'll still have to, I'll still have to come back once I get this MLB. We'll get that repaired. Not sure why I'm filming this. I, it seems like every time I try and do something on camera, it's like seven times harder than it is in normal day-to-day -day life. YouTube is a serious commitment of effort. All right. Okay, guys, we've got this all reassembled. I've got uh, the pin out on my little trip unit connector plug fixed. So we're gonna give this a shot. We're gonna go to our meter. Let's go A phase, because I know that one was messed up before. Push a little bit of current. It should only show up on just A phase. I'll do one amp here. Yes! Let's go, boys! Woo! It works! I'm so excited. Oh, I'm so excited. I'm physically excited for that. Let's go B phase. I put the test set. Look at that. Only B phase. Drop it down, turn to the C phase. Boy, howdy. Only C phase, we're not doing two phases at once. I just saved myself like five grand. Thank God we were able to get that Eaton test set figured out. Um, I'm blown away with the fact that a couple companies quoted me like four or five thousand dollars just to crack it open and take a look and they don't even know what's wrong with it. And that's before parts and labor to fix it. So um, I fixed it myself in like an hour. Pretty happy with that result. Uh, let's double down and <laughs> see if we can figure out what's wrong with this uh, with this Phoenix high pot. Now, um, I will say, high uh, stuff from Phoenix in general, it's it's okay. It's okay. It does what it's supposed to do most of the time. Uh, but. God, it's just, it's cheap. Like it's, it's, it's laboratory grade equipment, I guess. And if you keep it on an, a single workbench, it's fine. But the minute that you put it into a truck and drive around town with it, it seems to just uh, demolish itself. So uh, the tag on this one said that the ammeter didn't work no matter what voltage we were pushing out. I just pegged at zero. Uh, let's go turn the stupid thing on. I have no leads in, let's just see what happens. I wanna play around with it a little bit. Okay, we turn on. I'm gonna start on the lowest uh, range possible and we'll crank it up. Um, so f max range on the voltage scale would be five kV DC. That shoots is up there just fine. I have no current on my current meter, none whatsoever, which is, sure, I'll buy that for a dollar. Uh, all right. Put some test leads in and see what happens. This one's sort of weird. It's got this like long rat tail looking thing with a BNC connector to hold it in place. Focus. Uh, so this tip, the tip of this goes down into a bushing down in here and then the little BNC type connector just holds it straight. Uh oh, there we go. All right, so we should have 5 kV on this. 
Uh, and I don't really want to, I don't have anything to measure, so we're just going to hook it up like that and see what happens. Um, push a little voltage out of it. Let's go lowest range on my current, on my CT. Okay, that doesn't really move at all. Which I got the leads sort of next to each other, but not a big deal. Through something and just see if my current meter moves at all. What do you think the resistance of that is? Is that a calibrated standard? Whoa. Yeah, that thing didn't move at all. What the heck? If I'm putting 5 kV out this lead and I have no current out of here, What does that mean? That means it's open. Huh, okay. I wonder if my lead is messed up. Where'd my flute go? Huh. Is that straight when I put it in? What the f... What the... What? Okay, I gotta open this thing up. Uh, I'll be back in a second. Let's see here, what's under the hood? Am I gonna break this thing, pulling it open? Oh, I mean, this is cheap junk. Oh, it's full of oil. There's oil everywhere. Oh, this thing, what? Oh, what the f is this? Oh, oh my God. I've never been so disappointed my whole life. I mean, like, not that I'm surprised. Come on, girl. Come on, get out of there. Why is, why, why are you like that? Okay, whatever, we can leave this over here, maybe? And this is the transformer, and as you can see, it's not where it should, it's loose. What is this thing? Jesus. The transformer is held in with double stick tape and it doesn't stick because it's full of oil. Oh my God. Are you kidding me? This is the cheapest I'm this. What the Okay, I've calmed down. I'm sorry. The Eaton test set was broken. I can't be mad about that. We've used that thing a lot. It gets abused. It gets used. It gets taken in the field dozens and dozens of times. It gets, I've seen probably four or 500 breakers since we bought it and used. And this, that thing was made in 03, I think. Or the, the actual test set unit is much older than that. I think the adapter is from 03. Um, I'm okay repairing that. I don't have any issues with that. This iPod. Uh, this thing's $10,000. $10,000. We purchased it brand new. It's barely out of warranty. We've had it two and a half years used it half dozen times because it sucks. We know it sucks. Use it in a pinch. Let me, let me show you this thing. This looks like some Silicon Valley startup prototype bullcrap. So we got through hole components on the circuit board. Nothing SMD. Not that that's an indicator of a bad product, but it is an indicator that they haven't updated their design in 30 years. This is the the problem. Those are the, the terminal posts. That's where the high voltage lead goes in. That needs to slide into one of these two posts right here. So this is the transformer that takes um, the, the input voltage, steps it up to our 5, 10, 15 kV, whatever. I'm assuming it's just a big flyback, tri uh, flyback transformer. And then the, the DC terminal has some sort of 
rectifier in it that brings the brings the AC voltage to DC. Really the only important thing in the whole box. So you'd think it needs to be secured because it's a big giant heavy unit, but what holds it down? Literally just double stick tape. I need to autofocus with my nose. Double stick tape. Double stick tape holds this probably, oh man, 12 pound transformer unit in. Double stick tape. And in this case, it's not even sticky anymore because the box is leaking oil. There's oil in the bottom of the case. This is a big, ugly tan box full of dog for $10,000. And yeah, I could clean it up and put more double stick tape on it, but why? It got ripped off by Phoenix. And I've, I've asked them for refunds before, even on some of the stuff that was still in warranty, I've asked them for refunds and they're like, it's your problem now. What kind of company does that? They're just taking advantage of people who read the spec sheet and they're like, oh, this is just as good as a mega unit. This is just as good as an HBI unit. It's just as good as an ETI unit. They're not. Their high current test set is terrible too. The HC75 that we have, junk. Oh, on what planet is this worth $10,000? This is like a middle school science fair project. This is not professional test equipment. If you're anything like me, I would highly advise against investing in Phoenix Technologies test equipment. It's, it's junk. I don't think I bought by Doble. Maybe their equipment's gonna improve now that they got the Doble brand name tied to them. I kinda doubt it. Their service has been pretty bad. Every time, they don't pick up the phone on a Saturday. The couple times I've called needing service. But one time I called at like 1 p.m. Eastern on a Friday. Nobody was in the office. The receptionist picked up and was just like, yep, yeah, sorry. Call again next week. Regardless uh, of what we got done today, I really hope you found anything here uh, entertaining or useful or educational. I'm just starting out with this uh, YouTube stuff and it's all kind of new to me, so I'm still working on editing and lighting and filming and writing scripts and stuff like this. Uh, it takes probably three or four times longer than it needs to to do a job like this while I'm filming. Every time I get the camera on, it's like, an order of magnitude more complicated. So uh, uh, a like, comment, subscribe would mean the world to me. Uh, I've got a bunch more cool stuff planned. I've got a really fun video for next week, maybe the week after, I don't know, I'm a busy dude. <laughs> I try and cram this in when I can. Um, you'll definitely wanna stay tuned for that. And then I'm going to do a bunch more of my how to test stuff videos. I've got a couple relays planned. I've got a couple breaker testing jobs planned. So um, stay tuned for that. Share these videos with your new guys. And uh, yeah, we'll see you in the next one. Thanks guys.